Okay, my name is Gordon Edwards. I'm president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, and I'm sending Earth Day greetings to all of our friends and colleagues in Northern Ontario. I wanna thank you all so much for caring and working to keep our Northern environment and our Northern communities as clean and safe as possible for the benefit of present and future generations. My mother's family lived in Thunder Bay and I often visited the Lakehead for birthdays and wedding anniversaries. So it was a kind of second home for me. You remember the very first Earth Day was held on April 22nd, 1970, and it was a huge event. South of the border in the United States, 2,000 colleges and universities, as well as 10,000 public schools held teach-ins and other events from coast to coast. Similar events took place in Canada. It had a tremendous impact on a lot of people and the governments too. I myself became involved in environmental issues for the very first time that summer. And I learned then, to my great surprise, that nuclear power produces dangerous radioactive waste, something I had not previously known. Even though I had a degree in math, physics, and chemistry from the University of Toronto, it came as quite a shock to me, because I had been told that nuclear power was clean. We now know that disposing of the radioactive used fuel from Ontario's reactors will cost over $20 billion, while dismantling the reactors themselves will cost more billions of dollars and produce even more voluminous quantities of radioactive waste. But at that time, none of this was known. Six months after the first Earth Day, the Environmental Protection Agency was formed in the US, and the next year, 1971, the Government of Canada created our own Federal Department of Environment. Environmental assessments began to take place for the very first time, thanks to Earth Day. Four years later, in 1974, India exploded its first atomic bomb using plutonium produced in a Canadian research reactor that had been given as a gift. That was another shock because Canadians had also been told that nuclear power had nothing to do with nuclear bombs. The next year in 1975, it was discovered that the town of Port Hope, Ontario was heavily contaminated with radioactive waste from a government owned uranium refinery. Today, almost half a century later, a $1.2 billion cleanup is nearing completion in the town of Port Hope, involving the excavation of roads, ravines, the harbor, the beach, and hundreds of dwellings. This year, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, in charge of the cleanup, is going to ask the CNSC for permission to leave some of the uranium and arsenic contamination permanently in place, rather than cleaning it up completely, in order to save some trees from being cut down. In 1977, the radioactive waste issue went into high gear when the Canadian government published the Hare Report entitled Managing Canada's Nuclear Waste, for the first time advocating deep geological disposal of used nuclear fuel. The following year, the Porter Commission, the Ontario Royal Commission on Electric Power Planning, said that unless great progress is made on radioactive waste disposal by 1985, then the governments should seriously consider banning any future nuclear reactors from being built. In 1977, 78, and 79, Atomic Energy of Canada Limited tried to conduct test drilling preliminary to siting a waste repository, but they ran into a wall of opposition from communities in Ontario in the south, Madoc, as well as in Northern Ontario, Temiskaming, Massey, Thunder Bay, Atacokan, and elsewhere. So they slipped across the border into Manitoba, where they excavated an underground research laboratory for scientific studies on the DGR concept. However, Manitoba passed a law forbidding the actual burial of high-level waste in Manitoba, which still stands to this day. The Quebec National Assembly made a unanimous declaration that they too would not allow the permanent disposal of radioactive waste in their province. So now we have Northern Ontario being targeted as the nuclear industry's preferred site for permanently parking all of its used nuclear fuel forever. Of course, they do not intend to stop producing the waste. They want to build more and more reactors. So there will always be a huge amount of unburied waste at the surface, no matter how fast they bury the older and colder waste after 30 years on the surface. From 1988 to 1996, when the Canadian government tried to find a willing host community in Northern Ontario to accept the Port Hope radioactive waste, they came up empty handed. Now they're trying again with waste that are millions of times more radioactive. Will history repeat itself? Will they come up empty handed? Could be. It all depends on the sense of solidarity and determination of Northern Ontario residents. I wish you well, 
Let the Ukrainian resistance be an inspiration to all of us. The power of the people must not be underestimated.